What's good? What's good? What's good? This your boy Ox3. This your boy Ox3. It's my first ever uh, video review that I'm deciding to uh, start doing. You know, I, I'm not gonna really be uh, doing like written reviews anymore. If anything, uh, you know, my boy is just going to uh, take you know key points out of the videos. You know, for the blog and as far as the review goes, and then um, yeah, we're gonna have it like that. So this is something that I'm trying. I mean, shoot, I used to do. Uh, um reviews reactions and all that on my youtube channel so this ain't really nothing nothing new to me but i'm hella excited to talk about the recent album that i'm reviewing right now which is uh if i i really hope i don't butcher the same e hoff if i'm if i'm right because i know i know that the artist uh you know actual name is eric hoffman so um yeah man if i hope i got this name right oh so, yeah let's just get straight to it so first off, I just want to start off with saying that next to uh, Justin Witter's um, Swift album, this is the best thing I heard. Yeah, this is the best thing I have heard um, from a Syracuse artist this year. As a matter of fact, no, I'm going to even keep it real. This is the best thing I heard in overall like mainstream hip hop. Just like one of the main, one of the best things I heard as far as just mainstream. Uh, hip hop right now, and I know that uh, you know E Hop isn't mainstream, but this sounds like a, a mainstream album that deserves to be mainstream as far as the level of um, quality that this album has. You know, like this album is so <laughs> yo, th this album is clean as fuck. Now, I'm not gonna say that this album is perfect because there is definitely like one thing that is taken away from that album. You know, and um, I really hope that uh, there will be some tweaking of just one thing, just one thing. I'm I'm explain that uh, later. All right, but I just want to say that this album is such an inspiration for me as far as what Syracuse artists can be capable of. You know, because I can tell you right now, like, you know, as I'm I'm from Syracuse, man. I'm I'm 23 years old. I uh, grew up in Syracuse all my life. Now I'm of course not in Syracuse. You know I left in 2016, but you know as far as just trying to, <clears throat> um, you know try to trying to find something unique from a Syracuse artist, uh, something different. You know something fresh. You know it always seemed to kind of be in the same territory. You know like everyone following each other. That's, yeah, basically it seemed it just felt like everyone was following each other. You know, and it was like it just got tired it got tiring for me and that's why i kind of lost a little faith in syracuse artists for a while now up until this year you know when justin witter dropped uh swift you know uh and then of course you know came low dropping his your own body ep and everything and then here comes this album and whoo uh shit um i just want to say great fucking job e off man great fucking job but I also can't, I, I can't really just say great job to him. Like, the unsung hero of this fucking album is fucking A.K. Castro, man. It, A.K., A.K., man. Yo, you, I'm gonna tell you right now. Just because I had to look into the production of this album. And to find out that A.K. did this shit. And I knew about A.K. for a while now. I met him back in, um. 2015 at the uh, funk and waffle when i was performing you know with my uh old partner at the time you know and so you know ak i've kept my eye on him for a while now you know but oh man ak man you I, i'm gonna be real with you man you will coming as far as like just coming from my area you are my favorite producer coming out of my area right now man you are my favorite producer Cause the, yo you uh, yo you freaked it like and like uh, I, it's like I gotta I gotta say that um you are definitely consistent man you are definitely consistent you definitely progressed through the years man yeah you would definitely you would definitely able to um bring this album to life you know especially you know with a, uh, E Hoff like you know you definitely cater to what he needed for this album and on top of that man y'all y'all knew how to keep my y'all knew how to keep the listeners attention especially knowing the duration of each song like y'all didn't have it too long y'all didn't have too short y'all like y'all had it just right depending on the vibe 
of the listen of each song. Like y'all kept this shit cohesive. No album in my life coming out of Syracuse that had this has such a clean sequencing in an album, man. It was that was what made that was literally what ma helped make aside from the production itself. The sequencing was what helped uh, make the fucking album an experience, man. Especially when hearing with earphones, and it's like. Oh my god, like, dude, it was it was just like fucking me up. It was fucking me up. Like, dude, I, I can't I cannot stress this enough, man. And um shit. And AK, you must be a heavy bass lover, man, because I felt that but the the bass on this album, man, that whew, like just with my earphones, man. It's like it's one I'm gonna say it's one thing to hear it like out loud. But I feel like it's a whole other experience when you're hearing the, the the music of this album with earphones, man. It just feels like a whole different thing. Uh, a whole different thing. Like I feel like I need to be high when listening to shit like this. And take this in mind: this is coming from a, a person who has almost gotten tired, who's, who's who's basically kind of tired with like the use of auto tune. You know, I feel like people just out overdo it a lot of times. You know, um, but between just Ehaw, uh King Low, how AK man, like these dudes, at least coming from my city, man, these dudes these dudes know know how to fucking utilize, man. They know how to fucking utilize uh auto tune. Auto crooning, you know? Auto crooning and all that shit. A lot of times I like listening to my music that has meaning, especially as far as lyrics go, you know. But also depending on the delivery, the execution of, you know, the song. You know, you could basically talk about anything, you know? Uh, you could be talking about fucking somebody's bitch, but, you know, uh, if the fucking music sounds good. If the, if the music sounds good, period, uh, period, you know? And which y'all were able to do that, you know? But I feel like I now have to get into the the, crit the criticism. I had to criticize something. And I feel like this is very... It, it, it literally spreads throughout the entire album. Which is... Uh a uh, slight uh problem with the mixing which is um the vocals like I, yo everything everything is is clean except like i can't always li I'll, i stay having to listen in on the vocals man you know for every track it feels like the vocals are just a little just a tad bit drowned into the production of you know the album literally through every single track every single track you know every single track and it's like it would make things so much better if uh, uh if um ak if anything or i don't know who say it was whether if it was between like whether if it was e Hoff or ak himself but like man like y'all gotta turn them vocals up like just just turn them up just a little just a little man because you know it's like i, I would find myself a lot of times uh not able to uh, take in what the person is saying and just find myself getting lost into the music, you know, and I don't always like that now and that once again, it's the, the production the sequencing like everything else surrounding that album aside from You know the artist is what saves it. it that's what really saves the album mainly just the, the production, you know the, the, the way everything is structured all that shit, you know and so yeah, man it it's just I felt like I could have really had a it could have really had a greater impact if them vocals were just turned up a little more, just a little more, you know. Because I I mean I I had to like play you know aside from playing with earphones like you know. Um, I had to like be like okay, how does it sound when it's played out loud like on a speaker, and the music is actually uh the vocals are actually you know you can understand them fairly well, you know it's like all right all right it's tolerable but at the same time it's like when putting it in my earphones, if you're just trying to vibe out, that's where you have the problem, just in the earphones, you know? So that's why I say like, yo, turn them vocals up, turn them vocals up just a little. And take in mind, y'all, this is this is a, a review from an artist, you know, myself. Like I do music myself, you know, I'm a, I'm very, uh, I have such a high maintenance for sound, you know? And just, I'm always testing things out, listening through certain shit like, I'm always testing things out, you know. So this right here is literally the only critique I have, period. And let's get into the track list, though. So look, um, first off, let's start with the intro, man. Like the intro, man, like that was definitely what set the whole album off for me. Like that definitely 
uh really had me expecting more after hearing that um that intro uh luxury you know in parentheses you know that right there it was like <laughs> man taking my i was like watching my nephew when when i was um listening to that and i bro i was in my zone i was in my zone man i could I, <laughs> see look at me stuttering i was just i was just gone and i was like okay then all right you know just all right bet you know and um and shit like and i'm not going to be doing every track i'm just going off of the tracks that you know definitely had a uniqueness to them you know so yeah there was intro i loved i fucked with the worth uh plus was something definitely different uh the way the, the beat was so the beat was definitely definitely unique you know it really kind of took you out of what uh you may expect out of the album as a whole you know, it gave you something a little different, but didn't stray away as far as the cohesiveness, the the cohesiveness of the sound of the project. You know, then there's of course all wanted with the, uh, Tommy Bean, and Tommy definitely did his thing. You know, that that was a dope track. Uh, lovely, I love the um, reference he made to that song. Uh, lovely, you know, that song would be like, it, uh, it'd be like, isn't she lovely? Like that, I I really fuck with that. Um, type, I fuck with that. But actually, as a matter of fact, type might be the one in which like it was like a boom, 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 boom. Like that one, that that track may have been the most unique track out of the entire uh, track list. And it's definitely in my top five. That track was like, all right, bet you're trying to do something a little different, you know. And that's what I, I, I respect that. I respect that a lot when the artist can give you something cohesive, but still kind of take you out of, uh, you know, the comfort zone. Just, just a little, but not too far away to where it's unfamiliar, like uh, uncharted, uh, uncharted territory. But this, I respected it and I fuck with it. The shit was dope. I fuck with it heavy. So, addicted was fire too. Akira, I really love. That's definitely in my top five as well. Um, with a, a uh, featuring Utah Utain. Hopefully, if I'm, hopefully I'm not butchering the name. But yeah, now Utah, I, actually, I, if anything, Utah gave me some Juice World vibes, which is not bad. It's not It's not exactly a bad thing. Like, if he inspired you, that's dope because he definitely did his thing on the track too. You know, especially the beat switch up. Like, uh, Akira had such a fire beat um, switch up. Well, it wasn't exactly like too much of a switch up, but like, it added a new layer to the song to make it just keep your attention, you know, like. Akira definitely is um in my top five as well because I think I mean I said two like three top five tracks so far you know so yeah that's not my third one but um shit of course the last uh track would be time and time was honestly just like the um intro man the song uh luxury <laughs> being the perfect intro time was the perfect um ending outro to the album it felt like a sense of urgency man especially just the way like uh e hoff, e hoff was just talking about it being too late as far as like where he is or how he is now you know <clears throat> you know and just, just and like the music just really helped build like it really helped cater to that you know now i do want to say what which is weird is like like the one track uh that literally that i was not really feeling at all throughout the entire track was the second to last track which was relax which is before time and it was like i did i just had to look into the information like the people behind that track and that was literally the only track in which it didn't it, it did not have um ak's uh production behind but it was actually e hoffs so yeah <laughs> and um i just uh, Ehoff, I just want to say definitely, I mean, I can respect, like, all right, you want to have, you want to try and make it happen yourself, you know, and I can respect that. Uh, so, I mean, shit, keep progressing, you know, but I just, you know, I had to let me know, like, mm, wasn't feeling that, that was, all, relax, <laughs> relax was the only track I wasn't really feeling, you know, but um, yeah, there's that. Yeah, man, no, the, the, the tracks, man, yo, the deluxe tracks were good man like i can honestly tell y'all man i'm not a big fan of deluxe tracks like some honestly like just it seems like 
you know, a lot uh, of these days, man, artists be putting together uh, deluxe versions of albums, uh, deluxe editions, just to have these throwaway tracks. It literally feels like throwaways. Like, it's just like, boom, here, whatever. These, the, the fans are going to suck it up anyway. It's like, nah, like, for the majority of these tracks, man, like, literally the majority. I think every, damn near every track, man, I was like, okay, bet. Like, you still have more in the chamber. Like, you wasn't lazy with these either and on, and on top of that what i could really respect was the fact that there was sequencing even with the deluxe tracks which i fucking loved it was like it was like a whole new experience to add to the album which i really respected on the other hand though my critique as well is that man can we please just start putting the freaking uh deluxe tracks after the original version of the album like the original you know track listing you know like put it after don't put it in the beginning you know because you know when i was told to review this album uh the deluxe edition specifically i didn't realize like when i first started listening i didn't for a little bit like for a little bit of time i didn't even realize that the uh i was listening to basically the, the deluxe tracks first before the actual album you know and i didn't like that and it's like you know yeah <laughs> like please y'all just make it put it after the original tracks that's why i'm saying this i don't know what's going on with that but yeah man let me just real quick let me talk about these so energy love uh emergency i really fuck with uh and ak he did his thing on there too pass uh definitely fuck with king low my boy man like i just want to say i just have i have to say man like between King Low, once again, between King Low, AK man, and E Hawk man, like these niggas, man, these niggas know how to, these niggas show what Syracuse can be. These are the prime examples of what the fuck Syracuse can be when niggas come together, work together, you know, are able to work off of each other's shit, get to be on each other's projects. It's like, yo, these niggas understand, you know, the, the beauty of unity and how much it can do, man, how much it can do. And we don't have enough of that shit, man. I just have to address that real quick. But yeah, man, pain. Uh, fuck with that shit too. Ace, Ace Grandy, dope. He was good. Missing pieces. Damn, missing pieces was fire. I think missing pieces was my, was my favorite. <laughs> Off of um, the entire freaking uh, uh, deluxe edition of the uh, album. That that had to be my favorite. <clears throat> and then of course irrelevant with a little number one you did your thing too man keep that shit going man and, and i will say like the majority of the features through the deluxe edition basically like they were definitely able to um give the same type of uh some a similar vibe you know that fits the album especially with um you know e hoff's um performance you know <clears throat> and then lastly man um paradise which was the perfect fucking closer to the fucking deluxe edition and, and it had Davy g like which he did a fucking good job and like paradise it felt like it kind of gave me a chance to rob a type of vibe as, as far as uh, uh sonically you know but it just felt like just perfect it felt like the perfect closer to the fucking deluxe man i'm fucking proud to come from my this makes me fucking proud to come from my city. You know, just like with Justin, man, what he did to uh, uh, King Low, man, to this shit, man. It's like, what the fuck? And I'm not even going to, I'm not going to stop blasting this album because, I, you know, I I would think like, all right, I'm just going to review it. That's going to be it. It's like, nah, I've listened to this album a good several times thus far. <laughs> You know, before deciding to actually talk about it. And man, I just want to say great fucking job. e -Hawk, great job. Um, AK, man. Great job, man. Great job, man, man. It's like, this is, this is where emo rap is heading. I am all with it, man. You know, I, I never, I'll never forget as far as, you know, the new age that was coming. I mean, I'm only 23. I'm not going to act like I'm like a, I'm not gonna act like I'm old or anything. It's like I'm shit. I'm here. I'm I'm growing into where we are right now and rap and all that shit. And it's like 
Yeah, man. Something like this. An album like this is what is definitely needed for the culture of, you know, just a subgenre of the of the genre of hip hop, man. And I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm all for it. Hopefully people can be inspired by this. People can kind of take on inspiration to be more creative, you know? And and when I mean take inspiration, I mean literally take inspiration from just the cohesiveness, the cohesiveness of, of this album, the, the the sequencing, man, all every detail, man. Take learn from that shit and try to make it your own. Try to make it so you can uh, execute in your way, however you want to do it. You know, if you're trying to do something like this, you know. It is probably going on five in the morning now. It's been a long day, but I just wanted to say, man, lastly, once again, thank you, E. Hoff. Thank you, AK Casher, man. Great job, man. And AK, I got you next. All right. Peace.